Daniel here from Modern Physique. In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips to help you melt off the fat and keep it off. These five tips help me go from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds in a little bit over a year. So, so make sure you watch to the very end because honestly, tip number five is one of the most important tips and you probably never even thought about this. So let's dive straight into the video. Tip number one, you guys, don't worry about the macros. Worry more about the calories. See, this is one thing that I, that I learned early in the game. It's more about calories in versus calories out than having to actually track every single gram of protein, carbs, and fat that you eat. Why? Because at the end of the day, all you're really doing is counting, again, say it with me, calories in versus calories out. So, one thing that I do want to mention here is, what you want to do is focus on keeping your protein intake relatively high, as in one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. Once you reach those protein goals, you don't have to be scientific, meticulous, counting every single gram of food that goes into your mouth, no. Focus on getting enough calories, uh, as in enough protein, and then make sure that you're hitting your calorie goals. Whichever way you wanna do that, you wanna eat more carbs and less fat, go for it. You wanna eat more fat and less carbs, go for it. You wanna eat even more protein and reduce carbs and fats, go for that too. Whatever works for you. The only thing I would not recommend is cutting down your protein way too excessively and eliminating one food group altogether. I see this all the time. I'm only gonna eat protein, a little bit of fat, absolutely no carbs. That could be problematic. I honestly recommend just a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything focusing more on protein. Why? Proteins that have a muscle sparing effect, meaning not only are you gonna be able to increase your lean muscle mass if you're working out intensively, whatever muscle mass that you currently have is gonna retain that, making it much easier for you to get that for you to get that tone and defined look that you want to achieve. So while editing, I did realize that I forgot to mention. I included in this video a free PDF guide with over 200 meals that are low calorie, high protein dense. For anyone struggling to just create a diet plan, trying to lose weight and struggling with either having options or finding tasty meals that are actually low calorie, give that a look down below and it's free to download. So just go ahead and download that. Tip number two is gonna to be to increase your cardio and or your needs. For anyone who doesn't know, your needs is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Or in other words, all the calories that you burn throughout the day without intentionally trying to burn calories, as in without going to the gym or going for a walk or for a run, these are the calories that you burn for just being alive, or going to work, breathing, doing everything that your body normally does. Now, why do I mention this? See, working out is a fantastic way to get in general shape if you go to the gym, you're gonna build more muscle mass, which in turn is gonna help you burn more calories throughout the years and throughout the days and weeks because the more muscle mass that you carry, the more metabolically active your body is. Now, that's good for the long term. Now, for the short term, if you wanna increase the amount of calories that you're really burning and the amount of fat that you're burning, you're gonna to have to increase your cardio. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can actively increase your cardio, as in you can go for a walk, you can go for a jog, maybe some sides on some bike riding. Honestly, while there are better forms of cardio, I've made videos of this in the past, in my opinion, any cardio that gets you up from the couch and actually gets you active is the best form of cardio. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's running, if it's swimming, if it's hiking, if it's jump roping. As long as it gets you out of the, uh, you know, active, out of your butt, and actually out there burning calories and moving around, that's gonna be the best calories, that's gonna be the best cardio for you. Now, another way you can do this is also instead of just focusing on cardio, doing more uh, normal activities throughout the house. That's gonna increase your needs, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That could be as simple as maybe parking a little bit farther away from the store whenever you go out, cleaning around your house a little bit more, maybe being a little bit more active. All these small little details, while you may not realize it, is gonna increase the amount of calories that you burn throughout the day, throughout the weeks, throughout the months, and throughout the year. See, 
One thing that I like to do to just track uh, sort of my neat, I got a step counter and I put it directly in my phone. It's a free app. What I try to do is I try to reach about 10,000 to 15,000 steps per day. Now, here's the thing though. I, I work at a desk. I'm an attorney. I work 60 hours a week. Without intentionally doing more cardio, I still walk about nine to 9,500 steps per day. Meaning when I get home, all I really have to do is about a 15 to 20 minute walk and I reach my goals for the day when it comes to overall steps. Why do I mention this? A lot of times people think that they don't have time to exercise or to get activities in and I understand it, trust me. Again, I work 60 hours a week. I live almost two hours away from my office. So I have a four hour daily commute to my home, to my office and back, plus the 60 hours that I work. Trust me, I know. That's why increasing your needs and doing these little tips are gonna go a long way for your goal. And now that I mentioned my horrible work schedule and my unexisting work-life balance, here's gonna be tip number three. Try to get as much rest as possible. Here, see, here's the thing, a lot of people underestimate the importance of getting enough rest. Even though I work so long and I film these videos, I, I edit them, I work out, I try to prioritize getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Why? Everything your body does, it recovers while you sleep. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to gain muscle mass, all this occurs while you're sleeping. In turn, if you don't get enough rest, not only are you gonna limit the amount of fat loss and muscle gain that you can actually achieve, you're gonna feel horrible. You're gonna feel tired all the time. You're not gonna have enough energy to actually do your cardio and your workouts. And most likely, you're not even gonna have enough energy to just stay awake throughout the day. It's happened to me countless times where I have to be reaching for coffee. I even had a time where this wasn't as on point, where I didn't prioritize sleep, where I would have to drink pre-workouts throughout the day just to stay awake when I was in law school. That's not good, you guys, that's not good. Prioritize getting seven to nine hours of sleep. That way, one, you achieve your goals, you're not tired all the time, and you're not a caffeine junkie. Tip number four in this video, try to increase a little bit of muscle mass. Like I mentioned before, the more muscle mass that you actually carry on your body, the more metabolically active your body is, meaning the more muscle mass that your body holds, the more calories your body is gonna burn throughout the day to maintain that new muscle, meaning you're gonna be able to eat more calories throughout the week while still maintaining or still losing weight because your body requires more calories. Now, that's one of the best things that I've ever heard in my life. I wanna say that one more time. If you increase your lean body mass, you're gonna be able to eat more calories while still being in a calorie deficit. More food, less fat. As in more food and less belly fat. Now, another great thing about actually adding resistance training to your regimen is that by adding more muscle mass, not only are you burning off more calories throughout the day, but you're actually achieving the look that most people want. Nobody wants to end up being skinny fat or skinny skinny. Most people want to end up losing you know, some, some, some fat and getting a more ripped lean physique with a little bit of total muscle mass. Well, adding resistant training is gonna actually help you achieve those goals. Now, tip number five, and honestly, in my opinion, one of the most important tips that you can get from this video is be patient and take your time. Don't try any crash diets. Don't try any massive upfront calorie deficits, as in cutting 1,000, 1,500 calories and trying to lose two to three pounds per week, because it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I can tell you from experience. See, here's what happens when you either try a crash diet or one of these fat diets that end up cutting 1,000, uh, 1,500 calories or even more per day. See, while you are gonna lose Fat. You are going to lose weight. Yes, you are. Now, the thing is that all that weight is not going to come from fat. You're going to lose a lot of glycogen. You're going to lose a lot of water and muscle when you do this. So while you are losing some fat, you're sacrificing a lot of muscle while doing this. Also, you're going to feel like crap. You're not going to have any energy. You're going to be tired all the time. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be hangry. You're going to be a mix of hunger and angry. Because I don't know if you've ever been in such a strict diet before, 
your body really starts to fight you when you're not really eating enough. This is the fact that you're gonna hate the way you look because me, when, when I did try this, I literally saw my muscle mass going away. Literally saw this. And if you go on such an extreme diet, it's gonna be bad for you. You're gonna start losing a lot of muscle mass, energy, your hormones are gonna be uh, through, the, through the floor as in you're not gonna have a good sex drive anymore, meaning you're not gonna be able to get it up anymore while you're in such an extreme calorie deficit. And you know what's the worst part about all this? It's highly unsustainable, meaning most of the people, when you do this sort of crash diet, once you come off of it and you start eating normally, your body has so much hunger signals that you end up gaining the majority of the weight back and if not even more weight than you actually had in the beginning. Don't believe me? Go look into the biggest losers of uh, past uh, participants and see where they're at right now after the shows are done. Most of them not only gained the weight back, they gained even more fat than they had in the beginning when they first started the show. So what's the key point here? Take your time and be patient. It took me a little bit over a year to lose all that fat, but now, 11 years fast forward, I've never struggled with my weight again. So, if you enjoyed this video and you want even more tips to help you on your weight loss journey, watch this video right here for even more advice. I'll see you next time.